Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be talking about 25 pro tips you need to master ASAP. Now, unlike the normal advanced tips and tricks videos that I make, these strats are going to be very quick and straight to the point. Don't worry, I'm still going to include all the examples from other pros, as well as explain how they work. I'm just going to do it rapid fire style. Oh, also, the other thing that's going to be kind of different is that these are going to be very competitive based tips. These include stuff like OP trio tricks, strats to get storm surge, and just general pointers for doing well in tournaments. So I hope you're all excited. I put a ton of time and research into this video. Without further ado though, let's get right on into it. Tip numero uno is to prioritize gold. In case you have not been paying attention to competitive this season, gold is and has been the meta. Not only can you use gold to upgrade your weapons every match, but you can also use it to get materials, get loot, you can even use it to get exotic items like the snowball launcher. That thing is busted. How gold works is you spawn every match with 50 gold bars. You then get more from farming houses, opening chests, unlocking safes, and completing mission quests like bounties from NPCs. This brings us to tip number two. As we just discussed, you always want to utilize your gold with the NPCs, aka the non-player characters around the map. Gold is useless without them. Well, did you know that there's an exploit to instantly get gold with them? I learned this technique from 72 hours, so I'm just going to show his clips for it. Basically what you do is you take advantage of what are called 60 minute quests. These mission quests from NPCs last an entire hour. That's what 60 minutes is. But most importantly, they transfer from match to match. What 72 hours will do is to load up an arena game about an hour before a tournament starts, he'll go to as many NPCs as he can, get a ton of 60 minute quests, and then instead of going and completing them, he'll just leave the match. What this does is when the tournament actually starts, 72 hours will have like 50 quests he can complete for easy gold. I'm talking about stuff as easy as just farming wood or consuming peppers that will instantly get him to like 300 plus gold in minutes. And remember, he can do these wherever he lands. He does not need to be near the NPC that he got the quest from, so you basically get free gold. But Jerrion, who cares? about gold. Well, like I just said, all this gold can get you insane loot. You could pretty much have a gold scar and gold shotgun every single game just using this strat. So again, shout out to Tom for that strat. I said I learned it from him before. Go to his YouTube. I swear this man is always cooking up some good tricks. I love you 72 hours. Third pro tip, last one that is gold related, is that you actually have a quest tab next to your map. I never knew this until like three weeks ago when Mr. Freshation pulled it up. All you do is press your map keybind, go to the top left tab where it says quest, and click that instead of map. That's it. This is really important if you're going to use the 72 hours strat, because you can actually see all the quests you have. In fact, it actually shows you what NPC gave it to you and where that is on the map. Thus, if you're like me and you have short term memory loss, pull up the quest tab to get easy gold. Gold. Moving on, tip number four is to use zero point crystals instead of sand for long rotates. In chapter two, season five, the two main ways to rotate in the mid game are using zero point crystals or to get into the sand. Most people tend to think that sand tunneling is better because you're technically in the ground. Like, of course it's gonna be safer if nobody can see you, right? Well, not really. Sand tunneling actually makes you a much easier target to hit in stacked lobbies. People on performance mode are gonna see you really easily. Plus you're actually moving a lot slower most of the time time than you would with zero point crystals. On the topic of zero point crystals, a really simple trick you guys probably already know is that you can break zero point rocks just with your build. Just place a cone over it and it will destroy the rock much faster than a pickaxe can. Oh, I almost forgot. A little bonus tip for picking up the zero point crystals and consuming them is that you should spam crouch as you do it. I have never gotten headshot sniped this way. All the pros do this, including Joji, Mongrel, etc. Please do not stand still, spam crouch, or at least make your movement a little bit unpredictable. Final zero point crystal trick, I believe we're at number seven or eight for the video, just in general by the way, is a cool way to utilize the dash effect. By this point, most of you guys know the Martos strat where you get the wall really low, you dash forward as you break the wall, and boom, you're inside your opponent's box. What I bet you did not know, however, is that you can use the zero point effect to dash forward through doors. Just turn on auto open doors in your setting. If you don't have that on already, I'll be mad at you. Look at the door you want to dash through, and simply dash through it. There's not really any animation or anything. You could even see Essox Angler get a kill with it on your screen right now. Shout out to him from Reddit. I think it is quite the cheeky way to get a kill. Since we just talked about Martos strats, let's talk about this crazy bouncer play that you've probably never seen and will 100% throw off your opponent. In order to pull this off effectively, you need to be at the back of your one by one. Make sure you're hugging up against the wall. That way you face through the ramp you place in your box. From there, open up a window edit, turn around to the wall that you're 
you're hugging up against. Crouch down, that's important. Place a bouncer, and boom, you should fly through the little window you edited straight onto your opponent. The example I showed before was Face Martas, but I believe the person who discovered this was Parallel Doug. This guy has a whole video of these crazy bouncer strats. Huge ups to him for figuring them out and for revolutionizing the box fighting meta. Let's continue on with some cool box fighting tricks, this time with a way to build through walls. You guys may remember I showed this in my video on how to be a better W keyer. This trick is not necessarily new, it's just that EU pros have done it really well. They've discovered a way to consistently do it every time. I think that's worth talking about. My favorite way to do it is to go up to my opponent's wall, hold my ramp or cone build out, crouch down and look to the left a little bit, place the build and then uncrouch. When I do this, I'll either follow it up by taking their wall and then because I have peace control inside their box, get an easy kill, or I'll do the trick Noah Rayleigh style, I'll box up to the right of them, that way they have no escape. Wow, what a coincidence. Trick number 10 is actually Noah Rayleigh's signature box fighting peak. Yes, I know I showed this previously just as I did the last trick. They're just so good, come on. This peak is really easy since all you do is edit the top row of your wall, crouch down as you confirm the edit, and then uncrouch and jump up for a shot. While you do this, your opponent will have no angle on you, they'll barely be able to see the top of your head, and by the time you actually get the shot off, you should reset the wall, so they will have absolutely no counterplay. Yeah. Last of these box fighting tricks, I gotta throw in the classic right hand window edit. I don't know about you guys, but the way I see most people going for full boxes on their opponents is with a bottom Dorito edit, or a bottom four tile edit. This is not bad, it's obviously really useful for cone slides and for boxing your opponent if they're not amazing, it's just not the most optimal. Why is that? Well, because both of those edits take at least three tiles to select. A window edit on the other hand only takes one, making it much faster, much more secure since you can duck behind the wall you edited, and you still have a right hand peek. Shout out to Daddy Macwood for teaching me that. Something else Daddy Macwood taught me, specifically when he spectated me playing FNCS Opens, was to always check for loot spawns. I had a really bad habit of never checking loot spawns when there wasn't a chest near them. For example, if there was no chest within the ceiling of a house in Pleasant, I would just not break through to check for loot. Do not do this. You never know what loot can be in these loot spawns. It could be bouncers, it could be a good weapon, it could be extra ammo, it could really be anything. Therefore, do not be like me, don't be a lazy loser who does not want to check something because because there's no chest there. Always check floor loot spawns. Trick number 13, I kind of randomly threw this in here, is that sharks actually drop RPGs. As of right now, the Hydro Dam building outside of Slurpee Swamps is the only place you can consistently get an RPG. Do you know the one and only other way to get an RPG in Season 5? It's not consistent, but it does work. Yes, it is to kill a shark. Like I said, this method is a little more RNG because sharks don't always spawn. They also will not always drop you RPGs. No matter what though, you should always check the water near you if you land somewhere where there's shark spawns. Go and look for sharks. The team from Hydro Dam will be so confused when you RPG them from height. Another seemingly random tip I have is how to enable swap to pick up when you have scroll wheel pickup enabled as well. If you're someone who took my keybind advice, hopefully you were, then you're probably using scroll wheel up or scroll wheel down to pick up weapons. But Sharian, if I do this, I can't use hold to swap. Why would I do that? Chill little Timmy. That's the whole point of the trick. What you need to do is is set another keybind that you don't use for anything else to your secondary pickup. Double pickup binds. This way, once you enable hold to swap, not only can you use scroll wheel pickup to pick up weapons normally, open chest, use tap to search, but you could also swap your current weapon for a weapon that's on the ground using that new keybind. To help you guys understand, look at my inventory right now. This is me picking up a weapon with scroll wheel pickup. You see how it went to the back of my inventory? Well, with this trick, I can hold C on a weapon and instead of it going to the back of my inventory, it replaces the weapon that I just had, my AR for my shotgun. 200 IQ! Final 10 tips are going to be trio related, so don't be scared if I rapid fire through them. Up first is to memorize your Storm Surge numbers. Storm Surge is a mechanic that you probably saw in FNCS. Those games were stacked, even opens, that is used to lower the amount of people alive. For the second zone in the game, Storm Surge will activate if there's more than 70 people alive. 70. For the fourth zone, Storm Surge will activate if there's more than 50 
50 people alive. And for the sixth zone, that's the first moving one inside the storm. Storm Surge will activate if there's more than 30 people alive. Oh, and when I say activate, by the way, I mean it will start doing damage to people below the damage threshold once the zone fully closes in. Before that, it won't activate, but you will still see the number. Jerrion, how do I stay above Storm Surge, though? Don't you worry. I got you covered. One way is to damage people who are sand tunneling with explosives. All explosives, including fireflies, RPGs, gas cans, they could all do damage to people inside the sand. This counts for Storm Surge. Another way, also from Ryu Zanami, shout out to him for all these Storm Surge tricks, is to double gas can your opponent's box. I never do this, but two gas cans can actually go through your opponent's builds even while they're turbo building. Literally nothing can stop the explosives. My personal favorite way to get Surge, which you may have seen from my FNCS video, go watch that, I know a lot of you guys did not, is to do max damage to a downed opponent. For those of you that don't know, doing damage to opponents that are down or knocked actually does count towards Storm Surge. Additionally, you could do more damage than they have in their HP bar with a sniper. You see where I'm going with this? What a ton of pros will do is that they'll take the body of an opponent they kill, they'll throw it into their own tarp, and then they will headshot snipe the downed opponent for max damage. This will give them 200 plus Storm Surge damage compared to the normal 90 or so that you'll get just from finishing them with an AR. That is so smart! My final Storm Surge trick, it's really simple, it's what I learned from my teammate Taken, it's to go for AR tags instead of snipes. I know how tempting it can be to get that sick montage clip, that 200 meter headshot snipe for max damage, that is just not realistic though. You have to get tags to stay above Surge in the early and mid game, otherwise you're just gonna die. So the most realistic and reliable way to do that is to get AR tags. Just tap fire with your AR, stop going for snipes. Semi random tip for my teammate Rise. I know he's not gonna watch this, but I'll still put it in for you guys, is that you can actually drop 100 materials just by double clicking on that mat in your inventory. When we played FNCS, Ryze was always splitting his mats by pressing Z, which splits them in half, or by pressing X and using the little slider to choose how many mats he dropped. I don't know how he did not know this, he's been playing the game for years now. All you gotta do is double tap to drop 100 mats. You hear me, Ryze? Third to last tip, specifically for open qualifiers, is to not leave your final game just because you still have more games to play. What I mean by this is that around 10 minutes before a tournament ends, most players will queue up, try to W key, and then leave the game to get into one more match. That game that they leave is usually what we call a dead game, meaning there's not going to be too many people endgame. The way that we qualified for FNCS semis was by staying in that dead game. We had a few more games to play, but we decided not to back out and try to get into another game. That other game we would have been in, by the way, the final game, would have been insanely stacked, so we chose to stay in the dead game, play placement until there was like 15 people in the 6th zone, usually there's around 30 to 40, and win the game. Again, this obviously depends on how many points you need. If you need a ton of points, you probably have to W key and then play another game out. If you do not though, and you want free points, stay in that dead game like we did. Tip number 24, again for Rise. please watch this. Stop editing walls closed. This motherfudger got me killed like 3 times in FNCS by either editing a wall closed when he was in front of me, or just placing one. I think even Taken got me killed a few times like that, and I was stuck in my opponent's box. The rule for most trios should be if you're at the back of the tarp, you are the one who closes it. I forgive Ryze though because I know it's muscle memory. Don't worry Ryze, I still love you. Seriously though, the 25th and final tip, the moment you've all been waiting for, the end of the video, use code Jarian. Overall guys, those are 25 tips and tricks, pro tips and tricks, that you need to learn ASAP. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I say it every video, but I appreciate each and every one of you, I truly do. Go subscribe to more Jarian, my second channel. I just uploaded another FNCS highlight. I'm gonna try to upload more even without FNCS. Go subscribe to more Jarian. Otherwise, that's it for me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.